This video is brought to you by Squarespace, helping you make beautiful websites quickly and easily. <laughs> Greetings, and welcome to Earthling Cinema. I am your host, Garrix Wormuloid. This week's artifact is Shrek, the very first winner of the Best Animated Feature Oscar, even though the animation is creepy as hell. <laughs> oh god. The film takes place in one of Earth's fairy tale kingdoms, like Never Never Land or Scandinavia. Our protagonist is former Batman villain Max Shrek, a big green ogre who lives alone in a spacious one bedroom loft. But when a bunch of squatters are forced onto his land by royal decree, Shrek ain't having none of that. Not know how. Shrek goes to appeal to Lord Facebook and uses an extremely talkative GPS We gotta stick together! to get to Silicon Valley. I told you I'd find it! Lord Facebook agrees to give Shrek his land back on the condition that Shrek rescues some princess for him to force into his outdated conception of patriarchy. So Shrek and Donkey meander on over to the nearby Volcano Castle and rescue Princess Fiona from a dragon who's all about that vape life. Fiona thinks Shrek is a prince, because a small portion of his face is obscured by a helmet that he put on for basically no reason. But then he takes it off, and she gets bummed that he's an uggo. Kind of like the pot calling the kettle hypocritical. Don't you think? No! Also, she doesn't even try to contact her family once she's free. Who's the ogre now? Soon, Shrek and Fiona warm up to each other. Ow! Even experimenting with a little butt play. But then Donkey finds out Fiona has been cursed to turn into an ogre every night. Still better than finding out she's an ogre the next morning. Am I right, fellas? <laughs> Fiona and Shrek get in a big fight based on a simple misunderstanding. Who could ever love a beast so hideous and ugly? It would be cleared up in five seconds if either one of them stopped talking so vaguely. I thought you'd understand. Oh, I understand. And Shrek delivers Fiona to Lord Facebook. Donkey waits until Shrek is wee 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 all the way home before finally getting around to telling him he misunderstood the misunderstanding. She wasn't talking about you. So they how to train their dragon back to Facebook HQ, toot sweet. They don't do an all out rip off of The Graduate since Mike Myers has done that already, but Shrek does stop the wedding. You can't marry him. Fiona transforms and the disgusted Lord Facebook tries to put on his ad blocker. Get them out of my sight. So the dragon enables cookies. Shrek and Fiona kiss, which breaks the curse. Mmm, breaks it all night long. Only she's an ogre now, instead of a hot girl. I don't understand. They do humanity's most popular and timeless dance, the Macarena, <laughs> before ending the film on a somber note, a tribute to Eric Garner and other victims of police violence. Oh, oh. I can't breathe. Shrek undermines the idealistic perfection that pervades traditional fairy tale stories, in particular Disney's superficial and overly sentimental offerings. May our Disney overlords forgive and protect me. Throughout the story, the film takes pot shots at several of the beloved characters associated with classic Disney IP. Robert Hood and his Merry Men are depicted as a bunch of creepy Frenchmen who kidnap young girls and probably smell like cheese. Cinderella is presented as a mentally abused shut-in. Bachelorette number one is a mentally abused shut-in from a kingdom far, far away. And Shrek dismisses Snow White as just another piece of clutter. Dead broad off the table! What? Though to be fair, I have the same rule about my kitchen table. The film's anti-Disney agenda is most evident in its central characters, by which I mean the characters in the center of the screen. Shrek's first action is literally wiping his ass with a page from a book of fairy tales, and his second action does not appear to be washing his hands. He brushes his teeth with slime and farts like no one's watching, the opposite of the glamorous entrance usually awarded to more clenched up Disney heroes. Fiona eventually comes to her senses, but initially she behaves like a stereotypical Disney princess. You're expecting Prince Charming? Yes, actually. She expects to be swept off her sketchers in the storybook manner, with acts of chivalry and grand dramatic gestures. Recite an epic poem for me! However, the character who espouses these characteristics is the most odious character in the film, and also has the lamest haircut. Will you be the perfect bride for the perfect? Groom. The film's numerous attacks on the Disney aesthetic were purportedly to be the result of a feud between Disney CEO Michael Eisner and his former whipping boy Jeffrey J. Money Katzenberg. Under Eisner, Katzenberg ran Disney's movie and television division for a decade and was responsible for revitalizing Disney's stale animated film catalog with hits such as The Little Fish Lady, Interracial Couple, and The Genie Saves Hanukkah. Why? 
Despite Katzenberg's efforts, Disney refused to promote him, so Katzenberg left to start DreamWorks out of pure spite. Some believe that Katzenberg based the Lord Facebook character on Eisner, while I maintain that Eisner was based on him. Either way, Lord Facebook's kingdom is a dead ringer for Disneyland, complete with employees in ridiculous costumes and puppets singing incessantly about what a small and pitiful world Earth is. Katzenberg and his new friends at DreamWorks criticized the idea that the beautiful are destined for greater rewards than normal, less valuable people. Typically, at the end of a fairy tale, the lovely princess and handsome hero live happily ever after. Shrek rejects this narrative by making both of its heroes ugly, thereby suggesting that their marriage will be rocky and probably end in divorce. And isn't that the ending we really deserve? For Earthling Cinema, I'm Garrix Runroy. <laughs> Hello, Earth enthusiasts. Thanks for watching. Need a galaxy-wide web presence that will set you apart? There's no better way to do it than with a website made with Squarespace. Squarespace has made it easy for anyone to make a beautiful website themselves. They're giving you 10% off your first order when you use the offer code EARTHLING. With gorgeous templates and easy-to-use tools, they've made it simple to create the website you want. Go to squarespace.com earthling or use the link in the description below to sign up today. You'll get a free 14-day trial and you can see for yourself. Don't forget to use the offer code EARTHLING to get 10% off your order. And if you're not already a subscriber, share some waffles with this happy horse to be taken to our channel page, where you can find more episodes and partake in the holy earth tradition of hitting the subscribe button. New artifact explorations are around the corner. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.